All right, everybody, listen up. We're at week three on uh, medical terminology, winter 2017. It's about the integumentary system. Some important things that I wanted to go under to, under over with you. Uh, I was, mm, I don't want to say disappointed, but not exactly thrilled with the outcome of the quiz from the last week. It seemed like a lot of you either struggled with understanding the meaning or understanding the way that the uh, quiz was formatted, that there was going to be prefix uh, categories and suffix categories, and that you needed to be able to group both of those. And then you needed to also know the meanings of those. Um, I'm not sure what, I would like some feedback if any of you had some feedback on that uh, so that I can help you understand those. Uh, the grouping is not as important going forward, but definitely the meaning of prefixes and suffixes, you're going to have to know that stuff. The quizzes in the midterm, the midterm and final uh, will give you a complete medical term and you'll have to identify that. And so they will have prefixes and suffixes on there. They'll have root words, combining forms, and you'll need to be able to identify those things. Um, and so, you know, make sure you're understanding those. Make sure you're spending the time. This class definitely takes the time. You've got to study. You can't just log in, do your discussion boards, log in, and take the quiz. If you do that, you're not going to be successful in this class. You've got to spend the time. You've got to make the flashcards. You've got to do the things that are necessary for you to uh, be successful here. Um, some things that I noticed in particularly as far as struggling with the quiz this last week, a lot of you seem to struggle with uh, nouns and adjectives um, versus, uh, you know, diagnostic and pathological terms. Uh, make sure you know how to differentiate those two. Uh, also, seem like a lot of you struggled with direction questions like abduction or adduction. Those are definitely move, ones moving towards the midline of the body, ones moving away. Uh, and so, you you know, you need to know your directions. Uh, you need to know uh, your surgical terms like gastrotomy, um, herniorophy. Uh, make sure you understand those surgical uh, suffixes um, so that you can identify those terms. Uh, but overall, I think we can do better. We've got to apply ourselves better to the uh, work, I think, that involved in this class. Um, we are going to settle into a routine uh, the rest of the semester. No other quizzes are like the last one, so if you didn't do well with that, it's gone. Uh, you'll be on to the new format this week which I think is a lot more straightforward. Um, so that's the good news about that. If you didn't understand that material, it's important to get it, so make sure you get with me in that case. And then make sure you watch the lectures. I put these on here to help you focus your study. So if you watch these and you make note of the important things we talk about in these, you'll be able to focus your study for the quizzes, and I hope you'll do that. So we're talking about skin, of course, the integumentary system. Uh, skin has several other structures that are with it, hair, nails, and glands. Um, and so all that is covered in this section. So very important, under, and this is going to be for every week from now on. If there are structures that have more than one root words or combining forms, they're going to quiz you on them. So be prayer prayer that skin can be represented by cutaneo, dermato, or dermo. All of those mean skin. So here are some examples. Subcutaneous, under the skin. Dermatome, an area of skin supplied by a certain nerve. Hypodermic, under the skin, all right? So we, you have to make sure you understand that skin has all these words, and uh, these root words and combining forms are all used in different cases to represent skin. So make sure you're understanding that, right? 
Then there's terms to describe skin. So you've got um, squamal, right? Like in squamous cell carcinoma, this is a, like it's very scaly, it's gray, it's scaly, um, it's flaky. So that's what squamal, right? Squamous cell carcinoma is an example of that. You've got zero, which is dry, and skin can also be described as xerotic, right? So xerotic is dry skin. Melano, that's black, and you, this is most common in melanoma, and malignant melanomas are definitely black if you've ever seen one. So melanoma, right? You, you can all, sometimes people say you have mel, melanotic stool, which is blackness in the stool, which can mean some different things as far as bleeding goes. So melano, that's that's black. And then carado, that's, that's horny tissue. This is hard tissue, like hyperkeratotic tissue, extra horny tissue, right? Excessive horny tissue. This is a callus, too much growth of, of a hard tissue. So make sure you understand that these are root words. They're used to describe skin. Um, and those will be important for the quiz as well. Now hair, it, hair is like skin. There are, there's more than one root form word and combining form for hair, pilo and trico. So make sure you understand that either of those are acceptable answers and e both of those mean hair when we utilize them in uh, medical terms. So when we talk about uh, nails, there's multiple words for that as well. Onico, right? Onicornicia, that's infection of the nail. Well, onco is nail, so is ungo, right? So you have a subungual hematoma, that's collection of blood underneath the nail. So both of these are nail, right? So subungual, we have ungual, or ungo, which is the root word combining form. We have sub and then all, right? Pertaining to beneath the nail is what that's saying. And then a hematoma, a toma is like a, a tumor or a growth. So a, a growth of blood, a collection of blood underneath the nail. And that's what you need to be able to do is look at these words Recognize the root, recognize the prefix or the suffix, and then be able to, to define those out. And so that's, that's what's so important about this. Um, and that's why, for those of you who participated in the Helpful Hints discussion board, we're trying to do more of that, where you're actually breaking words apart and, and you're doing those things because that's what you need to be able to do to, to be successful in this class. Um, so nails are commonly associated with fungus, right? So you get this uh, root word myco, which is fungus. So here we go, onco, right? If you go back up here, here's that root word, right? Multiple root words can be in the, in the same word. They're linked by combining forms. Here's the O combining form. Onico, mycosis, right? Fungus of the nail, right? Here's the fungus part. Here's the nail part. So this is fungus of the nail, right? Um, so, the, right, here's another example, dermatomycosis. This is skin fungus, right? So, so different, right? Uh, so these are examples of that. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, fat is associated with the skin, right? Underneath the skin, you've got adipo. Uh, adipose is a collection of fatty in the body. Lipo, lipocelli, herni, herniation of fat. And steato, right, steatitis is inflammation of the adipose or flat tissue. So again, fat has multiple words, and this is a theme you've got to get used to. There, there's not always just one word that means this. Sometimes they have multiple words and they're used in different formats. So onto the glands, right? Multiple root words, hydro and sudor, right? And here's some inflammations, hydrodenitis, inflammation of the sweat gland and sudoresis, profuse sweating, aka hyperhidrosis is another word for it, right? This goes back to this root word. But both of these mean sweating, right? These are both terms, so hyper, excessive sweating, right? Hyperhidrosis. And sebaceous, right, SIBO, 
Seborrhea is discharge of sebum, right? We talked that a lot of you missed this on the quiz. Rhea, that's that's a directional, right? So diarrhea is, you know, it's directing out of the mouth. So here we got this discharge of sebum going on here. Um, so different, of course, with skin, we talk about grafting and there's different kinds of graft. There's autograft. Right, so auto, this is from the person. Allo, still human, but not the same person. And then xeno is foreign. So make sure you know this comes up multiple times in the class, this word xeno, and that it's a foreign substance. So make sure you, you understand that. Um, so that's kind of the integumentary system. Uh, last thing here, I told you we talk about learning a lot in this class. And so what do we learn from Nephi and learning? Well, here are a few things. Number one, I will go into learning is all about attitude, right? What kind of attitude? There, there's often a quote that, I, that I've said to my kids, your altitude is determined by your attitude. How high you go, what you, what you can do, is determined by the way that you look at things, the attitude you have about things. If you're positive, if you're upbeat, you're willing to put in the time, you're going to be great, you're going to be successful in this class and, and learning in general. When he doesn't understand, he asks questions. You know, I was just going through the mutual theme for the young men, young women theme is all about asking questions this year. And so, and the other thing I think we learned about Nephi with his questions, is he doesn't let his questions overcome his faith. And I think that's so key. That it's okay to have questions, it's okay to ask questions. The restoration of the gospel was brought about by questions. But those questions need to be answered with faith. And faith that the God has those answers for you. And that you can go to him or you can go to your professors, you can go to your fellow students. But when you don't understand things, ask questions. Don't wait till after the quiz and, and then wonder why you did bad. Make sure you're you're being proactive, and that's what Nephi did. When he didn't understand the things of his father's dream, he went to the Lord and asked to get clarification. Uh, he was a doer, right? He put in his time. He did his work, and that's part of learning. Uh, he built the bow and then asked his father where to go hunt. But he, he understood the process of, I got to do my part. And so you got to do your parts. You got to make flashcards. You got to review flashcards. You got to spend the time studying. You got to play with the terminology builder. You got to do these things. You do those things, and then you go to the Lord in prayer. I guarantee you, He's going to magnify your efforts a hundred percent. He knew how to recognize promptings. So as, make sure you understand you you can recognize when the Spirit is talking to you, and if you don't. Spend some time in the scriptures. Pray afterwards. Do these things to start building a pattern where you're feeling the spirit. Um, it's so important to understand how to recognize that spirit. He's going to prompt you and he's going to say, maybe you should do this this week for this class. And then you've got to act. You've got to be the doer part of Nephi. Right? And you've got to exercise your faith. And if you'll do those things, then you'll, you'll increase your learning. He knew how to identify correct sources of information. He went back to the brass plates. He went back to his father, the prophet. He understood reputable sources of information. All right, You can find anything about anything nowadays. You have to understand reputable sources of information. You have to be willing to use those. And last but not least, he understood the importance of keeping the commandments. Having the spirit with you is so much of the battle of learning. And the way that we do that is keep the commandments, take the sacrament, renew our covenants. That's half the battle. If, if you're not keeping yourself where the Spirit can influence you, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. So go and do. Ask questions. Have a good attitude. Listen to the Spirit. Identify good sources. And then keep the commandments so that the Spirit can magnify your efforts. If you do these things, you're on the process of learning how to be a great learner, lifelong learner, and an excellent leader, disciple of Jesus Christ. And I bear that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.